Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook from Tea Doddles. It's time for another Fabric Obsessed podcast. Um, I'm recording this <laughs> very late on a Friday night. It is after 11 o'clock, but I have noticed my eyes look a little red, maybe. But I have been sewing and I didn't realize what time it was. And then I said, I need to record a podcast for tomorrow. So, that's what I'm doing now. So, um, yeah. (laughs) So, let's get on with it. This is my podcast about all things fabric and sewing. Uh, Because I like to do a lot of different things. So, I try to divide up my podcast in that way. So, if you prefer one over over the other... You can uh, watch that one. I got my bangs. I need a haircut. But anyway, that's not what I was talking about. I was talking about sewing. Lesson time. Which is what I was doing. Which is why I'm recording this so late. (laughs) Plus, I'm a little wired up. Honestly, because... um, For those who have watched other podcasts, I was talking about my foot and how... I had this rash on it and it swole up and I had went to the doctor and they did a biopsy on it and gave me steroids and antibiotics for it and everything, which I finished those, but the biopsy came back that I was having an allergic reaction and possible eczema, <laughs> which I did not know eczema could turn into something like that, but uh, now I'm starting to get a little itchy. Uh, Y'all probably don't want to see that. Probably can't see it anyway, but... I'm starting to get little itchy patches all over myself. And so the doctor has put me on another dose of steroids. Um, They tend to make me a little hyper, I have to admit. A little talky. A little more than usual. So, yeah, that's probably why it's 11 o'clock. I didn't realize it because I wasn't tired like I usually am. So... That's the update on my foot. That's what's going on there. I just got to figure out what's causing the allergic reaction now. Which, it's going to be a process of elimination. I do know that, um, uh, I, I use mostly natural cleaners and uh, detergents. Um, the other week I did use... I accidentally put Tide Pods in with my sheets for the bed. I don't normally do that. Uh, Those are for my husband's clothes because they're so dirty that I haven't found anything else that gets them clean, honestly. So, that may be what it is. I don't know because I use a Mrs. Meyers detergent for my clothing. Because the top of my foot rarely has anything on it but I seem to be more itchy when I wake up so I'm thinking it might be there and plus the pillow I was using has goose feathers in it and I think that's what's called the the rash across my neck although it hasn't ever bothered me before but I decided to swap that out so anyway enough about my itchiness um let's get on with the fabric and the sewing okay so uh First thing is, this shirt I'm wearing, yes, this is part of what I was sewing on today because I worked on it yesterday. I didn't have an afternoon class, so I had some extra time off, and I already had this cut out to sew, and these sleeves on this shirt, oh my gosh, they would not fit in this opening. It's a set-in sleeve, which usually I do a set-in sleeve. I sew them in before I sew up the side seams and then I sew up the side seam and the seam and the sleeve all in one go because it's just easier to do but I was like this is just not fitting in here there's way too much fabric you usually have to ease the sleeve into the opening but there was just way way too much extra fabric I mean it wasn't supposed to be ruffled or pleated or anything so y'all I fought with that thing so much and then I Fought with it again this afternoon because, and I finally, I had to, if you look, there's a seam 
well, it's almost like a dark because it stops right there. Because I couldn't take up everything because then this would have been too narrow for my arm. But I had to put a, a basically a dart down the center of that to take out that excess fabric. Because I tried putting a pleat in in the top of it, but it was so much better. It would just look so stupid. It's like, I'm not wearing that. So, because the way this is made, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this because I'm so close up. But it has a yoke in the back. And it has little uh, pleat. Well, they're not pleats, but like it's just ruched or drew, drawn up back there. And then it it comes over and then you have the ruching kind of here. And then this is just, you sew the front like it's a, like if it had a button placket, but you just leave this open and then you leave the bottom open. I'll try to stand up and show it. I'm in kind of a squished little spot over here between my table, my work table, <laughs> and my sewing area. So, let's see. I don't think you're going to it. It's very long. I was going to show you the hem on it. I did a double stitched hem, and you'll also not you well you might not notice this until I show you, but I have some stitches that are blue and some that are green, because I had blue in my bobbin and green in my top stitch. But I like the way that it looks because it has the colors in the fabric. Um, so this is this is a really long tunic style top. Um. So yeah, I finally finished it. Uh, I would have preferred this neck opening not to be quite so wide, but otherwise I I will wear this. Um, it's very soft fabric and comfortable. I got this. Um, this is the pattern. It's Butterick B5826. Yeah. Um, it's I did the C one right there without the pockets. I didn't want those pockets on the front. And I didn't leave the opening as big because I didn't want it just hanging out like that. I'd have to wear a camisole under it or something if I wanted to wear it to work. So, um, originally I wanted to do the D with the long sleeves, but the fabric, I didn't have enough fabric to do that. Of course, if I had to cut the fabric a different way and thought about it more when I did it, I probably would have. But I got this fabric with this pattern from Fabric Mart. I want to say it was like five bucks. It was on a clearance. They were clearing some out the little sets they had like that. It, it was very cheap. I mean, for the fabric, because it was two yards of fabric in this pattern. Because, yeah, let's see. D and C. Mm, yeah. It had to be a little bit more than that. It says two and a quarter yards for C and two and three quarters for D, which had the long sleeves. But um, either way, I like it. I finally finished it. Um, this is really the only finished sewn object I have to show today because uh, I spent so long trying to fix these stupid sleeves. <laughs> so um, I have not done the second block of the Save the Bees quilt along. Um, I did do the first block, which I showed in my last Fabric Obsessed. I haven't done the second one yet. I was hoping to get that at least cut out tonight, but I did not. So, but tomorrow, I hopefully will get that done. Um, so, I'm going to talk about, I do have some new fabrics to show, but I would like to talk about some works in progress I have first. Um, I have this has got pins and I'm trying to be careful. Okay. I talked, I think I did anyway, a little bit on the last uh, podcast, fabric podcast, about making some bags and then I was going to use some fabrics um, wanted to dye them and things like that. Um, and I forgot something to hold on to. This. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so, uh, these fabrics I have shown before. They're not new, but I have, they're, these are wet because 
I washed them so I can dye them tomorrow, um, which I'd hope to get to today as well. Stern shirt, I tell you what. Um, I'm going to wear it every single day just because it gave me so much grief. No, I'm really not. And I also realized, yo, know, look, there's a little part that didn't get caught. So I have to fix that. So I've got, I still got to go in and re sew that. I don't know what happened right there, but this shirt. Anywho, Ooh, I laid this on my lap. It's very cold. Okay, so. I'm going to show you the bags that I'm talking about making because I want to make some really large uh, bags like for projects and stuff like for crochet and stuff because when you have a blanket or something you, you can't keep your yarn some most of the project bags you see are not that big and I had a pattern already that I used a lot for diaper bags for people who were having babies um, I actually did a two part I'll put those down below. Two part posts about a bag in progress where people got to vote on the different aspects of the bag and then somebody won the bag and that was a long time ago. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll pop a picture up here of it too. That'll be a good idea. And I'll put links down below. Because I don't have it with me because it went to the winner of that contest. Okay, back to this. So, this one, these are canvas light. They're 100% cottons because that just is better when you're dyeing stuff like this. is natural fiber. So, this has got the black and white. I'm planning on dyeing it. I'm not dyeing the whole piece of fabric. I'm planning on hanging the end of the fabric in the dye and letting it kind of soak up a little bit and maybe sprit, uh, putting some sprinkled dots up in it if that makes any sense but I'm going to do this tangerine or yeah tangerine mat no I think that's just a different language Christy tangerine dye on this one because I think it'll give it a little bit of a Halloweeny look but I just I think I like that combination. So there's that one. Um, this next one, this is much, this is much drapier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, it's thinner. It's not really a, a stiffer canvasy material, or even a stiffer fabric. But I am still gonna dye it because it has so much yellow in the lines already. I'm gonna do this sunshine, sunshine orange for it and it may turn into something besides a bag I don't know yet but that's what I have planned for that one and then let's see this one she'll have two yards of this one but this is a take more textured kind of canvas as the blue stripes in it so I'm gonna use the navy blue on this one so Hopefully, by the time I do my next Fabric Obsessed podcast, I'll have this dyed and you can, sh you can show it. If I make a bag out of it by then, I'll probably show it in my monthly roundup so that uh, y'all can at least see them. So I am planning on, planning on selling these bags. So I'm trying to have all this done before the end of the month to put them up. Um, I haven't decided where I'm going to sell them at yet, so... Um, that's still in the works, but I also have, I have tons of heavyweight apparel fabrics and things, um, and some that were, came from yard sales that I thrifted and stuff, and it's like, I could use them to make some bags because, or upholstery fabrics, they actually make good bags because they're durable and they're heavy and you don't have to put any kind of, uh, batting or interfacing in them to make them a little stiffer. So, I had I started this one. This is another reason I was so late, because I had cut it out, and I wanted to just try to sew it, but I didn't really, it's not sewn, except for the the bag part itself. Um, but this is my plan. See, this is, this is the bag. This is the big bag. So, this is a velvet upholstery fabric. I don't know if the color's picking up that great on that. Nope. 
set it there and see will you but um so I like this it reminds me of a carpet bag or something uh, and so on the inside I have put one of these Tim Holtz fabrics I got um, it has airplanes and stuff on it thought that was really neat to have on the inside and then this part that's hanging off over the side um, originally when I made these bags I put zippers in them because they were like zippers but I wanted one to try to do one with the drawstring kind of sacky top um, so my intent and this is like I said this is not sewn on it's just pinned on there for right now is to make this because this is two sides doing a terrible job of showing this this is two sides like this and they'll be finished off and everything but I would put a drawstring around you know I've got this camera way too close to me I got this drawstring let me I'll try to push this camera back way over there I think that's a little better now I can show y'all something without feeling like I'm right up in the camera okay so I'll put like a drawstring type thing in this part so then you can draw it up and kind of tuck it in the top when you're not using it and it's also the drawstrings become like the handles and then when you want to open it, you, you pull off the drawstrings and you can wrap it around the top of the bag like that. So you can get to what's in there. So that is my intent. And I'll be working on that some more tomorrow. So look for some Instagram photos. I'll, if I get it fixed and finished, I'll put an Instagram photo. I really like that fabric on the inside. Um... And there will be pockets. I'm planning on putting pockets in here. I don't have any pockets in here right now. That's who doesn't love a pocket. But this is a big, this is like a 15 by 15 bag. And it's about 6 inches deep. So this is a big bag, y'all. Um, but, you know, crocheters, if you make an afghan or even a sweater sometimes, you need a big bag, right? Um, and I will be making them in different sizes. Um, I have, these are some templates I've been working on. So, I'm going to call this my Mega Maker Bag. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, and then I have one that's about 8 by 8 deep that I'll do. Um, and I will do some with zippers and some with drawstring tops. Um, because I feel like, plus I ordered some zippers, so I need to use them in some... But I feel like some people would like the zippers and some people would like the drawstring. So, there'll be some of both. Um, so, I have that size and then I did a mini maker bag. So, this would be just a maker bag. It's a good size for uh, a scarf or hats and, you know, stuff like that. And then, I don't do a huge amount of socks, but I have. I want to start making more socks. So, this is this size would be like the mini maker bag for socks and then I've got a couple of things I've been working out for notion pouches so um, I'm trying to do a notion pouch that I can just make out of charm squares because it's already cut for me and that's just easy to do um, and then I have I will also do some totes um, like this this is just a charm square tote. It's really easy. The pattern that I, my pattern's on the blog. I'll link that down below too. Um, so this just would be an open tote in there. Did I put a pocket in this one? Of course I didn't because it's mine. I didn't put a pocket in it. But <laughs> I will put a pocket in there. It's always good to have a pocket and probably a loop in case you want to hang. Um, like a loop and you can put one of those book binder things on it um, so you could hang like even scissors or whatever your keys your uh, discount card for the fabric store yarn store <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so these 
this would be another type of bag. So I have several different types of bags planned. And I'm going to make them and hopefully somebody will like them and buy them. Um, so that's something I'm aiming to have done by the end of the month. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do an Etsy shop or like on my Facebook page I could do a shop. I think that's through Shopify. I, don't, I probably would eventually put a cart on my website, but I don't want to deal with that right now. Um, I'd rather use a site at this moment that has all that set up already, so I don't have to do all that. So, um, yeah, if you have any, if you have an Etsy shop or if you sell through Facebook, just tell me what you think. How, how does it work for you? Do you enjoy one over the other? Um, I do shop on Etsy a lot, so, um, yeah, so just let me know. So that's something that's coming up. Um, I'm excited about it because I got lots of ideas. Um, I have, well, besides the fabric I've been buying specifically for the bags, I have been pulling things off of my shelf over here, um, like, these are left over from the linen pants I made. Um, but I think they could be incorporated in a bag somehow, you know, like a, even a simple sack bag or something. So I have that. This is some interesting fabric I have left over from, I'm thinking a Halloween costume. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's what that's from. I have this purple corduroy, which has been in my stash forever. Ooh sideways maybe that's better yeah um I was gonna originally make me a jacket out of it and so let's see it may wind up in a bag though <laughs> um I also have brown a ton of brown corduroy uh hold on and then I have as I pick up fabric at yard sales and things like that all the time or sometimes people give me fabric for whatever reason if they don't want it um I have this bit of this is canvas it's kind of got shells and stuff on it it's not something I would prefer but when I make these bags they will have mixed prints and things and there may be some that have quilted sides versus like the bag I showed you um it just depends on what strikes my fancy the bag sizes will be all that is the same i'll only make so many in certain s the fabrics that i make them in so uh because that keeps it from being too monotonous for me i suppose <laughs> i don't like sewing things repeatedly um these are fairly simple to sew so if i'm going to sew it repeatedly it has to be interesting in the fabrics at least if that makes sense um okay everything's falling so, let's see, I also have some, uh, I had another piece of this, where, oh, there it is, some of this toile, I have this blue print, uh, which I really like, it has a big seam on it, and then I have this black and beigey kind of print, which is a smaller seams on it, I think that would be interesting as a bag, I have some left, I made my mother some bed pillows with this. Uh, it kind of has this big flower print on it and that black damask kind of feel in the back. I think that would be good in a bag. Um, I have this canvas, which this came in a thrifted yard sale box because this is not something I would normally pick out. But I think that I could probably mix that in with something to make me like it better maybe I don't know but somebody else might like it but that's some canvas I've got and I really like this and I may actually do some dye on it I don't know yet but this is something I got from a thrift yard sale thrift box too it's like I got over two yards of this it's the little pink bands on it so um yeah I think that would be good in a bag too because I don't know what else I would do with that it's interesting and I love the texture of the fabric but it wouldn't be something that I would make because uh, you could probably make a lightweight coat or something or jacket out of this but it wouldn't be something that I would make a coat out of 
but um because that color it was just too well I don't know not too bad but still I think it would make a good bag uh let's see and I have this which I have no idea what this is made of it was another thrifted fabric I love the texture on it it reminds me of knitted cables um, but it is very, the color is very dingy looking to me, right? It's, um, and I don't know if I could dye this. I wouldn't make a bag with this unless I could dye it because I do not like the color on it. It just looks dingy. Like it's, like it's been sat on a bunch or something. I don't know how else to say that, but, um, I, since I don't know the fabric content out of it, I could do... It is a, an upholstery fabric. You can tell by the, you see, it's really thick. Um, so I think I would, I would do a burn test on it to see what it might be made of. Um, and I would just have to like try to test dye in one corner of it or something because I don't want to use a bunch of dye on it if it's not going to take dye. Um, so that's one that I think would make a really cool bag if I can get it to be a different color because it just, I don't like the color, the, it's just not a pleasing color to me. So those are the fabrics from my stash that have potential for bag making. Um, so that, and the only other thing coming up Monday on the blog is Monday is the D stash craft room D stash challenge that blog hop that I do. So that blog post actually goes live at 12 midnight Sunday night. Um, so I have to get that done. But the, the point of it is to uh, make something from the stash in your, your craft room uh, to actually use your, your crafty supplies. Uh, versus just collecting them. <laughs> so, this up, upcoming Monday, this is what I'll be doing. I have quite the collection of mini charm squares. Uh, because I was in the mini charm square club for a fat quarter shop for a while. I decided not to do that anymore because I have enough of them. And I just, I was like, I don't need any more of these. So, um, my plan is uh, I'm going to make quilt blocks with each pack. If there's a double in there, I'll put it off to the side to use for something else. But that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, and I'm sure I have enough for a decent sized quilt in here. So uh, that's what I'm planning on doing for Monday's post. So that's something you can watch out for. Um, so, anything else upcoming right now? I don't think so. So, we're going to move on to some new purchases. New things. Um, I wanted a new club since I didn't do the fact, the mini charm squad club anymore. So, um, I started the Geeky Stitching Company Club. Look at that. It says Christie's club box on it. I thought that was cool. It's got a little sticker. So, um, and this is a cross stitch club. This actually comes from the United Kingdom. So, it's not super expensive, but the transfer from the United Kingdom to U.S. money is, I think it was with shipping in US dollars, like it's right around $20 a month or $21. It might be a little less. Don't remember. I'll put it all down there below. But um, it comes in a little thing like this, and it always has these little confetti dots because they got all over <laughs> everything. It has a sticker, which I've already opened this. But um, you get you get a hoop each month. Uh, you get a full thing of floss for something 
each month. This is a bonus. This is a DMC with a black color thread. You get all the thread for the project in the box. Yeah. On there. You get this piece size of a uh, cross stitch fabric and then you get a smaller piece of cross stitch fabric and you get three patterns so you get this one says stitch me in a six inch hoop it's H is for honey I think that's really cute and this one says this is a mini pattern you stitch it in a four inch hoop this is Avo Good Day, which I love. I love avocados. Um, this one is the original Breakfast Club, which is cute. And this one is the main pattern. It goes in the five inch hoop. So that would be the hoop that it came with. So I think that's really cute. And uh, okay, this says it's 1150 pounds. And pounds including shipping oh and I got a sucker I already ate that sorry <laughs> it came with a sucker too so I ate it it was quite tasty <laughs> so uh, that's what that comes with and I just I really like it I saw it on who was showing this Yvette I can't remember her last name she does a lot of unboxings for quilting things and sewing things as well as uh, beauty boxes and clothing boxes. She does all kinds of unboxing. So I saw it on there and I thought I really like that and I kind of hem and hauled about it because of the money exchange. It made it a little more than what it seemed it would be. But I said you know what I'm going to give it a try and I like it. It's really cute. Comes in a little box and so I will at least keep it until the end of the year and then I'll see if I actually make one because <laughs> if I don't there's no reason in keeping to keep getting them <laughs> so that's my new club um, I haven't found a fabric club I really want to join mostly because you don't get to pick the fabric and then they're a little pricey and then maybe I get fabric I don't like so, I don't know. I'd rather just find good fabric deals and buy them that way. So, alright. Let's move along. More new purchases. Um, I mentioned that I ordered zippers for the bags. Um, I got these from Zip It on Etsy. Um, they had lots of good zippers and stuff. And I think I've heard about them from somewhere and you know I ordered some zippers and like the next day I was looking I said I need some long zippers too and then I had ordered more zippers and I was like I realized I'd ordered them both from the same place I was like I just paid for shipping twice but they saw that and combined my shipping and refunded my money for shipping the second set of shipping so I was very grateful for that um, so it was like five dollars or something it wasn't that bad but uh yeah so I got let's see I got a pack of assorted um colorful seven inch zippers yeah they were like nine dollars and there's 25 in here uh and it came with this free zipper pool which I thought was really cute so, so I got those in all kinds of rainbow colors until I decide if maybe I use one more than the other. I don't know. So for the long zippers, I did just pick certain colors. Um, these would be the ones for the big mega bag for the ones that had zippers. Um, and I really liked the this metallic antique brass finish on them. So I got this tealy blue I got this 
deep purple and then I got the gray because those are some of the colors I like together and I think they'll fit in with most of the bags I designed so that's what I got these were um let's see stapled together so I got five pieces for $8.75 yeah for the 18 inch zippers well the purple and blue are 18 inches the gray one is 20 inches because they don't have an 18 inch in it so but and it's called gunmetal gray and eggplant purple and parrot blue so those are the I got those I really liked the colors of them and these are sh more short zippers for the six inch whoop, the seven inch zippers but I really love this color combination yeah I just love that that colored green with that goldy zipper um, that is brass metal zippers misty meadow green yeah and I got five of them for 625 so that's not bad for zippers um, well a nice metal tooth zipper which I feel like will be better for although these these have the nylon zip which are okay for small things um, the metal zippers I feel like work better for bigger bags especially because um, they just hold more um, I'm dumping stuff all over the floor okay so I also y'all check out these buttons ah, they're little tapes they're little like they're little wood buttons can you see that thing? yeah there we go yeah it's like a little tape like you know I'm older y'all so that's what I had I thought those were the cutest things and then they sent this these little buttons for free with my package. It's a little kitty cat and a little flower. Isn't that cute? So cute. So, and the buttons were, let's see, how much were the buttons? $2.25 for eight of them. So, but I thought those were just so cute. I didn't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but. Maybe I'll stick them on some of the bags. I think they're just really cute. So, moving on. This is getting carried away. Well, no, it's not too long. It's not as long as some of them. This might not be that long, y'all. It's kind of sad, ain't it? Maybe not. Okay, so the other week when I was in Walmart, I found clearance thread, which I showed in my yarn, or clearance yarn. Y'all have to forgive me when I say thread, and I mean yarn because I just I call it thread even though I know it's something different yarn because you can crochet with a certain type of thread so anyway I also found this is not very exciting but this hook and loop tape so on hook and loop tape for like 10 cents when I got that yarn so I got all three they had because the other ones were stick on hook and loop which I don't like because it never stays stuck on fabric <laughs> and you can't sew through it well, you can. You can hand sew through it. It's a pain in the butt because I've had to do it before. So, yeah. that's what, that was. I haven't used this particular prim. I don't know. It's some kind of generic off-brand tape. So, we'll see how it works. But for $0.10, cent, I put it in my cart. Alright. So, now, I ordered all this twill tape. Yeah, I know. Twill tape. So exciting. This one came from, oh my gosh, I don't have the card. I'll put it down. The Etsy shop I bought it from. It was like 58 cent a yard. It was pretty cheap. It's just plain old cotton twill tape. Um, I'm going to use these to make labels for my bags. And probably some little tabs inside the bag. Like the little loops inside the bags. For holding whatever. And then I also got these. Because it was a good price. It's two inch. So I have two of these because <laughs> the lady, this is from Maple Street Textiles, um, Sally, she sent, 
she mailed it to me. It was like the day after Labor Day. I got a thing that it had been shipped. And then like later that day or the next morning, it said it had been delivered. And I was like, surely it has not. Because I think, I think this came from Michigan. But I'm not sure. So, and I looked in my mailbox. I was like, it's not in here. What is that saying? And so then I realized I had gotten all my other stuff and I still hadn't gotten that. So I said, let me send her a message because I looked on there and it said it had been delivered to the same zip code where she lives at. And she said, she looked at it and she said, well, it wasn't returned to us. So I don't know where it went. And She's like, well, we can either refund your money or send you a replacement product. I said, well, I'd still like to have it. So she sent it out. And I got a... She said she was going to send it out that day or something. I don't know. And then the next day, it was in my mailbox. And I didn't really think anything about it. I was like, oh, I got it. And then I seen a message from her saying she had just... <laughs> like the next day, she had just shipped the second one. I said, oh, my goodness. I got this in the mail yesterday, and I didn't think about it, but I could have told you. I said, this must be the one that got lost. So, she told me to just keep this one because it was not worth the shipping to send it back. But, I'm actually going to, I'm going to put this in the giveaway on my blog for the so long that's happening right now. So, that's where this will go, the extra one. So, thank you, Sally, from Maple Street Textiles. Um, I appreciate that. And I will be adding this to my giveaway box. Give me just a Okay. That also reminded me, I did finish something else, technically. I haven't fixed this thing because I took it back out. But the second ornament for the Merry Christmas Sew Along on the blog that I'm doing along with Farmhouse Quilts. Monique from Farmhouse Monique from Farmhouse Quilts. My second ornament went live this past Monday. It's the Snowflake Frills pattern. Yeah. It's an embroidery pattern. Um, it is free um, on the blog so you can print it off. Uh, I actually printed mine onto my fabric and the thread covered it up really nice. This thread is so wonderful. This embroidery thread was given to me by a friend of mine in Australia. A little packet she sent me with stuff in it. And it's hand dyed in uh, Australia. I don't know if you can see the, um, the color changes in the thread. But it's like hand dyed yarn, y'all. But it's, it's embroidery thread. It's so beautiful. Um, it's 100% cotton. Um, it is pricey for embroidery thread because I looked it up online. Which, it may be cheaper in Australia, I don't know. But it was like $5 for the little scheme of embroidery thread. But it is cut to the perfect, already cut to the perfect length. The little pieces that are wound up in there. So you can just grab one and divide it out. So... Um, but that is free on the blog and there are, um, there, there's two prizes this year. Monique's doing one and I'm doing one. So at the end of the, the sew along, which ends in December, uh, we will each draw a winner. Um, and to enter, all you have to do is make the ornaments and post pictures in our Facebook group or on, uh, Instagram. You can use the tag. I'm going to put that up here. Uh, Merry Christmas SAL or SAL 2018 um, and each ornament you make gives you an entry into the into the contest so we're basically pulling stuff from our stash although I think I'm gonna find something that maybe new new to put in here I mean some of this well I have some stuff that's new like this this is going in this box so these are the things I have so far. Um, I put just last week this mini mason jar full of wooden buttons that I got from uh, Thrifting Adventures. And there are, they've fallen down in there. But there's a little sparkly silver button in there and a red button and a blue button that I had already put in there. I just put them in this jar 
when I added it and I did put some uh, well some of this is DMC and some is JP Coates floss um, and white and red and then this variegated blue is in here um, and yes there's fabric in here so this this fabric is for I have some Christmas fabric in here because it's a Christmas so long but I put some fabric in here that's for um, when the spring rolls around so you can show you something for spring um, so I have these these are two fat eighths and then these are two fat quarters and this is a Tula Pink Fat Quarter. Um, I had another, the same print in another colorway that I like better. So that is in there. And then this is, can be Christmassy or not. This is a cotton and steel. It's kind of sparkly Fat Quarter. And then there is a, this Nordic Stitches Charm Pack. Um which I bought. I really liked it, but I don't, I haven't ever used it. So there's that. That's in there. And then I have, oh, there's my other, see y'all, I knew there was more buttons. See, there's this button that's kind of florally, florally, and this candy cane button. Yeah, need to put those in that jar. I thought there was more buttons in there. There we go. And then I have this. This is, I believe this is a yard. I wrote it on the blog, so. But it has this border print with the gingerbread men, and then the, the rest of it looks like this with the gingerbread men and baking mitts and stuff on it. Um, I've just never used it. So this is all new fabric. Never been used before. Um, and then I also put one of these little, it's a wax, little wax thing for your thread. So, um, and before the end of it, I'm, I'm sure I'll add something else in here. Like I said, I would like to get something not from my stash. But all this stuff has come from my stash so far. And, oh, this is what I'm adding in here. That's useful for a lot of things. I think so that is my prize so far for the stitch along so if you haven't or the sew along so if you haven't joined in yet you really should um, I don't know what Monique's doing for her prize yet she has yet to show it so but I know she's been moving and renovating and stuff so hopefully she'll show it show it soon um, maybe she wants to make it a surprise I don't know I like to show stuff because I just like, I have a hard time keeping surprises to myself. <laughs> it's very hard for me. So, um, there's that. So, let's move on along. I have a little bit of actual fabric to show y'all. So, we will go through this as quick as possible because getting later, I'm getting tighter and I still have to edit this and have it ready for tomorrow. So. Alright, so I've been on Fabric Mart again. Oh, I need to stop looking at their emails. But I always get these at such good prices. Um, so this first one is a multi-rayon lacquer abstract cityscape print. I got two yards of it. It was only $3 a yard, I think. Six. Uh, yeah, this is pretty bright. We're gonna make me some leggings out of this. <laughs> I need some more leggings. So that is what I got that for. And I have just, I like fabric mark fabrics because they come with, they come with that nice little label on it and then I don't have to do my labels like I do on my other ones, which you've probably seen in the beginning where I have to um, cut me a little index card and put information on it so I remember what that fabric is on. Okay, I'm totally fooling with that. It's heavy. Alright, next. <laughs> this one is a coral black rayon lycra monkey print jersey knit. Um, it was $4 a yard. I got a yard of it. 
So, this is probably going to blow out the camera because it's a little bright, but look at that. <laughs> I just loved that. Uh, they had it in white and like a pale green, but I just loved this. This color actually looks pretty good on me. me. So, and I just like the monkeys. So, that'll be a t-shirt or something like that. Um, it's a very soft, lightweight jersey. Um, this is a navy white cotton polyester burnout jersey knit. Also $4 for a yard. Uh, yeah, it's just stripes. It has that burnout look to it. Uh, a darker blue stripe. And this is just, it's very soft. It's a little sheer too, so this would have to have something up under it. Uh, it's good t-shirt material though. Um, I actually ordered that because I thought my mother might like it, but I don't know now since it's so sheer. But um, this one is a champagne pink salmon, champagne pink salmon pink muted black multi rayon lycra wispy. It's three ninety nine for a yard, and this one I definitely got for my mother, even though I do like it too. This has got like the palm trees and the the uh, flowers on it. Uh, it's a very soft, lightweight, and a very pale pink in the background. So my mother really liked the the stripy top I showed in my well, I don't think it was in my Fabric Obsessed podcast. I think it was in my monthly roundup podcast. I wore it. Uh, it was blue and dark blue kind of chevroni looking uh she really liked that shirt so i'm gonna make her one like out of this so this one is heathered light charcoal black polyester lycra lightweight sweater material um i paid 520 for a yard and a half of this i think that's right yeah so it's like this speckled tweedy looking black it's a very very lightweight sweater knit so um i may make a top out of it um originally i thought i might make a wrap but i may just make a top out of it i don't know yet so then this one this feels kind of interesting but this is a um heathered yellow blue wool bamboo lycra jersey knit okay this one was $8, and it says dry clean, which I didn't realize when I bought this, because I was going to make a t-shirt out of it. I'm not dry cleaning a t-shirt, y'all. But this is, it's just a heathered knit, but it feels, it's because it's got the wool in it and the bamboo. You can feel the wool in it. You can definitely feel the wool in it. Um, so, yeah. I had originally, I was going to make a shirt to go with my leggings. That's why I got it, but... I didn't realize it was dry clean. So, we will see. I might, I don't know. It might, it might fuzz up really bad if I put it in the washing machine. Uh, so, we'll see how that goes. So now, these, these next two I bought for bags. Um, this is a citrus lime white, 100% cotton, stars print corduroy. It's five twenty for a yard. Yeah, this is bright. Ooh, this is bright. Can you see the stars? There we go. Yeah. And yeah, that that's pretty much that bright. It's probably not as bright. It's probably a little more muted than that. It's a very chartreuse kind of color uh, versus it's citrus lime. So, but this was another one that I got extra. I think I got. I did measure this and I wrote it down, but I don't remember where I put it. But so if you get the end of the bolt, they'll give you the end of it. Um, so I think I have a yard and a half instead of a yard of that. So that is for bag. And then I got this black gunmetal 100% cotton striated canvas suiting. Suiting is another good one for bags. $3.99 for two yards. Well, I think it's $3.99 a yard. But this is not picking up. But it's very got a good texture to it. Maybe that'll be better. 
Um, so my intent with these darker ones is to try some bleaching prints um, for that instead of the dye. So that's something I've got to get some buckets. So because you have to neutralize the solution. So we'll see how that turns out. So then the next two I actually got from Girl Charlie. These are sweatshirt, lightweight sweatshirt knits. Uh, I got this coral color. I think I got, yeah, I got a yard of each because I plan on using them on the same top. But that's oh, not picking up good focus. It's not that bright. This is a coral kind of color. It's not as bright as it's making it in there, but it's, these have that terry cloth backing. It's very lightweight, though. You're not going to see that good. Let's see if you can see the other one better. Um, let's see. This one is a the same kind of fabric, but it's like a vintage rose kind of color. Um, it's kind of purpley in the background. It's not really showing up, but it's a vintage. And then you can probably see the terry cloth backing better on that. So it's got that, you know how sweatshirts, if you buy a heavier one, it has that texture on the back. This is a very lightweight one though. So it has that texture. So um, I'm planning on, and I didn't print out that pattern, so uh, I'm planning on making a blank slate patterns crisscross top out of that um so i'll try to show that next time but um y'all my camera is almost full so i'm gonna have to let y'all go plus it's late but um i hope you enjoyed the podcast and all my fabric goodies um Please let me know if you are interested in those bags, if you think that's a good idea, if it's something you would utilize for something. Um, but I will, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing. Um, and I will see y'all next Saturday for DIY Thrifty uh, Fun Podcast. And Tuesday, I'll be doing another tutorial video. I don't know what for yet. But we'll, we'll see what that's going to be for because I don't know yet. If you have any suggestions, leave them down below. So I'll see y'all next time.